Hello everyone, welcome in Crochet Life and Stuff with Deborah. Today it is the Cool Girls Guide to Crochet on Book Look. Much thinner book this week than it was the last time. Um, this book I, I did pick up from Abe Books, which is a used bookstore, no affiliation, but you can find some decent crochet books on there if you're looking. And it looks like this was originally published in the UK. Author on there is Nikki Trench. I'm taking off the outside cover so that I can flip through it without dropping it because that is likely to happen. Oh, by the way, let's see if it had the cost in here. No cost on there. Original cost. So, hmm. Y'all know I didn't pay much for it. I'm frugal. I'm cheap. Yeah, let's be real. Um, to me, looking through this, as I looked through it before I did this, it looks to me like this is geared more towards a teen girl, you know, or a young adult woman. Maybe a beginner because it says in here, everything the novice crocheter needs to know. And the illustrations are very much yet like this in this style, just like on the front, you know, just chicks sitting around. There are a lot of pictures too. This was originally published in 2006 when I first looked at it. I thought that it was from an earlier era, just the way it's written. It's it's kind of retro in its approach. Um, the table of contents, the only thing I really don't like is it is done, the table of contents in this very scripted font. And for someone with astigmatism whose eyes kind of make things go weird and wonky, it gets kind of hard to read sometimes. But part one, new age crochet, part two, what you need and what to do with it. And part three, cool girls patterns to get you hooked. And part four, loose ends. New age crochet. And they show these girls in here. Um, crochet on the Rowan stand at the knitting and stitching show in London. Just some chicks hanging out and crocheting as, as one does, I suppose. This does not have the snark of Stitch and Bitch. But this is talking about the history and who crochets and what they crochet and men who crochet, fashion, fillet, Afghan, art, just, you know, big descriptions of everything. And in each section, you do get a cool little illustration. Supposedly someone in the 1950s sitting around crocheting. Look at that clock. Look at that clock. I would put that up on the wall today. Also, there are quizzes, and I thought that was kind of funny. Now that you've read a little bit about the subject, try our crochet quiz for fun. Don't let the clues put you off. The answers are in your crochet knowledge and are commonly used crochet terms. So there's all kinds of things. There's even a question um, about who knows what Peruvian animal this is. Hmm. But yeah. 20 different questions. There you go. What you need and what to do with it. See, these sections in the beginning are not that long. There's a lot of patterns in here after this. Tells you about the yarn and thread and all the different types. Silk, cotton, ribbon yarn, eyelash yarn, slash hairy yarns. Not hairy scary or hairy carry, just hairy yarns. I like this picture, though. Just a whole bunch of different kinds of yarns wound up. Fancy yarns, string rags, leather strips, raffia, ply, uh, fingering weight or four ply, and it does give you the terms in here. Uh, sport weight or double knitting, DK, worsted weight or Aran, chunky weight, extra bulky weight or super chunky. That's me, super chunky. Um, how to read a label. Up at the top there, no big illustration of a label though, it's kind of disappointing. Um, crochet equipment talking about hooks and the different hook sizes giving you us and old uk and the millimeters please put everything in the millimeters that is so much more standardized um how about pins straight pins with colored ends should be used for blocking and checking gauge there's that gauge word again okay uh scissors or as i call them skizzers because that's how it's spelled um Wool sewing needles, tape measure, buttons, yada yada. Oh, here's our next illustration. 
I like that. The 1960s. Uh, she looks very groovy with her flared out pants. Uh, talking about your gauge square and the first steps. And it does show you how to hold the, the hook. How to hold the yarn. I don't do either of these things. But, you know. I have a very non-standard way of doing crochet, I guess. How to make the first stitches with some pretty good pictures of the stitches, but no illustrations to really point and stuff. Putting the arrows on there. Chain, slip stitch, single crochet, and there are abbreviations thereof. Double crochet. half double crochet, treble crochet. And the, th the funny thing is, I'm looking at these terms, they are actually, I know this was published in London. They're all the terms in here are, they're using American terms. The treble crochet is wrap around twice. It is an actual triple, triple or treble crochet that we call it here. The double crochet is the American double crochet. So that's kind of confusing. Some stitch variations, including a popcorn stitch and a couple of other things. Oh, wow. The 1970s. They nailed that. Holy cannoli. Talking about working in rows, how to turn your work. Working in the round. Increasing, decreasing, making a square. All the, the usual things. Fastening off and finishing with a couple of pictures there of that. Okay, and here's the section on United States versus United Kingdom. And the terminology. How to read a crochet pattern. Crochet beading. Uh, beating on single crochet, beating on double crochets, seams. Oh, how to seam with your needle and such. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of good information in this one about that. Edgings. Nothing too fancy, but, you know, this is a beginner's book. Single crochet, pico, and shell. They give you all there on that page. They give you frill on the next page, which is that there. And here's another illustration. This is the 1980s. I don't think they quite got her shoulder pads big enough, but they definitely got her hair big enough. What do you think? Apparently, every, you know, even in the 80s, I ripped shoulder, shoulder pads out of my clothes. I just couldn't deal. But I did have big hair. Oh, did I have some big hair. Uh, we get into embellishments. I don't know what in the heck she's holding there. It looks like some tribbles that have like gotten dropped in some hair dye. I'm not sure. Um, talks about making pom-poms and mini pom-poms. Some methods of doing that. You know, I've yet to really make a pom-pom, an actual one. Tassels, fringes, little flowers buttons and more buttons where to buy yarn and cottons internet yarn suppliers <clears throat> and in 2006 I mean that was you know some major stuff there um, department stores not anymore wool stores charity stores Sometimes um, carrying and storing yarn and crochet. They give some pictures of some things to put your your hooks in. And okay, where where is the plethora of project bags? We're not showing that. Washing, blocking, and steaming, and ironing. Don't ever iron acrylic. Okay, nobody wants melted plastic. Um, here's another image for you 1990s I like the boots though the big chunky boots I still wear those because I do 
cool girls patterns to get you hooked. It's what it says. I'm not making this up, okay? Um, the yarn starts here, and they just talk about what each thing's kind of used as you're going to go through this and look. Um, we're not going to go through and read all that. Oh, here we go. 2000s. The 2000s look confused, don't they? Some abbreviations of what to do in the patterns. We're starting off with something that we all like to make. I know I do anyway. Beanie hat. I may have to look at that pattern and see what it takes and how many rounds. This is called the Flower Blanket. This is all done in Erin. Um, look at that. Those are some pretty motifs though. Nice neutral colors. You can kind of do that any color you wanted, but I like that. This is called the Frill Shawl. Boy, this looks fuzzy. Oh yeah. This is the big picture of it there. Sorry about that. And look at this picture up close. Wow, that is some fuzzy stuff. That is definitely a no frog zone. You try that, you're done. You're done. The pet's play mat. My whole house is my pet's play mat. Of course, you know, cute cat, just for reference there. There is the play mat. My cat would eat the fringe. Or at least he tried to. That just can't happen. I mean, it's cute. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. Summer flower camisole. Let's see what size they're saying that it is. <laughs> to fit bust sizes, either 32, 34, or 36. No. She looks so sullen. She looks like Avril Lavigne stole her boyfriend or something. This is the Stripey Dog Blanket. I think that'd be a good scrappy project. Get you going on using all those scrap balls. Oh, and cute puppy dog sitting with the blanket going, nope, it's mine. Can't have it. Striped hair bands. Not like hair bands, but you know, those things. I think somebody stole her boyfriend and she's like trying to make her feel better. They don't look real happy. I don't know why. The mesh bag. I hope they have a better picture of it than that. No, they don't. That just looks really, really busy to me. You can't really see what it is. There's a close-up or a more close-up, but it really just looks like a pile of a pile of colors. Not that a pile of colors is bad, but put something in it so we can see the details. A Thai bolero. Again, she looks really, really sad. Maybe she's just hungry. She looks kind of hungry. I like the stitch in that though. The flower power beaded belt. This looks like it belongs back in the 60s or the 70s. Right? But I mean, it's cute. But yeah. Summer brimmed hat. Now, I'm not mad at this one. Okay, there's the picture of the chick wearing it. You gotta have the chick wearing it. She looks like she wants to be a hippie, but she was born 30 years too late. And there's the hat. I kind of like that. I would probably wear that. This one is called the Daisy Cashmere Scarf. It's granny squares, y'all. It's squares and pom-poms at the end. And there's a chick wearing it. 
she spots a sandwich on the other side over there. Fingerless gloves. The things I love. <clears throat> this is made out of Debbie Bliss alpaca silk. Whoa. It doesn't say what size it is, but it uses crochet hook size F slash 5. I'd have to go look that up to see what millimeter it is. I think it's kind of small. But not too dig in the color. Not for me anyway. I mean, it's kind of pretty, but not something I would wear, I don't think. But yeah, maybe something like it. Beaded purse. I'm sorry, but isn't that skirt just absurd? I know this is about the crochet stuff, but I can't help myself. That's a cute little bag. Little beads on it and stuff. Ribbon slippers. In this picture, these look like those tiny little slippers that they used to bind girls' feet in in China back, you know, a long time ago. That's just the shape of them, I guess. And why are the slippers up there with the coffee? I'm confused. Hot water bottle cover. I honestly couldn't tell you the last time I saw a hot water bottle cover. It was a lot earlier than 2006 when this book came out. So, okay. Cushion cake. I'm confused by this item. It says that it's, well, I mean, it looks like, oh, where you put your needles, pin cushion, but it's on a chair. Do you sit on top of the cake mountain and just, you know, plant yourself on top of that flower? I'm genuinely confused about this one. Why would you put your bum on a flower? If you know, please let me know down in the comments. I have no idea. Um, some more details about that. This one is called the Loopy Cushion. Now that I think would be kind of fun to do. Now that I know how to do the loop stitch after doing the uh, Pick and Mix Cow with Lisa Ladybird, whose uh, merch shirt I'm wearing today. Um, yeah, I thought about that because I think that would be kind of cool. Don't care for the buttons that are on it. But the loopy stuff, which is mostly on the other. Okay, this side is flat. The other side is loopy. I got gotcha. you. Go back to that picture. Why are there apples under that chair? <clears throat> Why are there apples under the chair? This book is confusing me the more I look at it. Clutch bag with bow. Oh, and you actually put snaps in it instead of the magnetic ones. Okay. I'd go with the magnets, but maybe that's just me. Yeah, and I think, and they also lined it. That is pretty cute, though, if you're going to put makeup and stuff in it, or, you know, to take with you. Placemat and coaster. We're making circles, y'all. Lots of circles. And then, for no apparent reason, and I'm not making this up, I'm showing you so you see I'm not making it up, there's a love questionnaire. What? No, really. What? Let me read you some of these questions. Because, y'all, okay. Number one, what do you wear when you're trying to attract the opposite sex? A, full evening dress and high heels. B, sexy mini skirt and a boob tube. What the hell is a boob tube? Now I'm really confused. 
C. A hip, skinny, crocheted, stripy scarf worn with a denim skirt and big boots. I don't even know what to answer on that. Number two. I, I just can't stop. On your first date, where, where do you go? To the cinema. To a club. Or knit crochet clubs, club night stitch and bitch group. Okay. That could be fun. The hubby wouldn't want to go there for that. We'd go to the movies instead if it weren't for the pandemic. <clears throat> Three, what tickets would you like to be given for your first date with a new man? Listen to these answers, y'all. A Green Day gig. Actually, that could be fun. I understand they put on a good show. B, a popular Broadway show. Oh, if I had the money to like hang out and go to all the Broadway shows, I would love to do that. I love Broadway. Or C, as an audience member of a craft TV network where you participate in a crochet circle full of men and women who crochet. Okay. Most, I mean, I don't know any men who crochet personally, like in my personal life. There are lots that do. My guy doesn't understand. He just knows that I'm doing things with the yarn and I'm making him a blanket. Okay. Four, where would you go for a weekend away with your honey? A five-star hotel with a spa? Somewhere in the north in a log cabin? Or C, visit a sheep farm in northern Scotland where they spin their own fleece from the underbelly of a sheep that eats seaweed. Actually, I would choose C on that if somebody else were paying because I've always wanted to go to Scotland. Um, yeah, that would be fun. What's your favorite swimwear your partner wears? Oh, honey. My fella can't swim. No. No. And the, the choice, the choices are surf shorts slash bikini. Speedos. No. Unless you're on a competing swim team. No. Or crochet cotton swimming trunks slash bikini in the latest colors. This book really confuses me. On a date, which sporting event would you prefer to be taken to? A. Football. B. Baseball. C. The world's fastest crochet competition. Is that a thing? And if it's a thing, is it a sport? I'm not that keen on sports. I can get into the whole, you know, it's fun to watch and everything, but I haven't played any sports since high school. That was way more than 30 years ago. I played volleyball. I'm a tall girl. Of course I did. Okay. On a cozy night with your partner, would you prefer to A, snuggle up on the sofa listening to music, B, eat a TV dinner and a bag of popcorn, or C, do a joint crochet project where you crochet each other a beanie hat. Okay, honey's not going to crochet me a beanie hat, so we could just leave that one out. Um, we usually eat dinner in front of the TV. We cook and then bring it in there. And after we're done eating, I'm crocheting and we're watching stuff. We're together, but we're not doing the exact same thing all the time. It's okay. We are not Siamese twins. And number eight... What do you look for in a partner? Beautiful eyes, a good personality, or strong arms to hold up your hanks of wool while you wind it into a ball. The, the key on this, if you answered mostly A's, you take life too seriously. Go straight to your computer, go online, and find your nearest knitter crochet group and join immediately. Mostly bees. You're in danger of letting life pass you by. You'll never find a partner if you continue this way. You need to crochet more. Go and buy some needles and yarn and make the scarf on page 73. <laughs> or mostly sees. What a wonderful person you are. You must attract potential partners every time you set your crocheted slipper outside the door. This book is weird. 
Um, the rest of this is there are websites, uh, places to get yarn and stuff like that, all the usuals, and an index. This book confuses me. I like the illustrations in it. I do. I think those are fun. The rest, though? Yeah, maybe this book wasn't written for me. Yeah. But, hey, you win some, you lose some. If this is something you'd like to have, great. You can go find it used someplace, and now you know, kind of know what's in it. If not, then you won't pick it up if you didn't really need to, right? Okay, then. That has been Book Look, as weird as that one was. Uh, thanks for coming by. I appreciate you being here. If you're not subscribed already, I would love it if you would subscribe. And when you're subscribed, go ahead and hit that notification bell because that way YouTube will let you know when I when a video pops out for me, okay? Do a book look every week. There's time for tea on Mondays. Tuesdays is snacks around the world, so be sure and tune in for that. And we've got the vloggy thing on Saturdays. And otherwise, just whatever happens, we'll put it up on here. I'll share. Check the community page for info as well. Thank you all for coming by, and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye, y'all.